Hello and welcome to this ethical hacking course. In this lecture, in this video, we want to work on some ethical hacking methods and techniques and see how we can have a quick overview on a lot of concepts in here. So this is our website. This is hackers.exposed. And in here, we represent a lot of uh, stuff in our blog. And also we have our courses right here. So I will tell you why I'm showing you these courses later on. But for now, let's continue and see what we want to do. So here we are on our shell in Linux. My host operating system is Kali Linux. This is the operating system I have for many years now on my laptop. So you might have, uh, of course, Windows operating system. Or if you are on a Mac, you might have Mac OS X or any other version of the Mac OS operating system. But the point is, we want to work on a virtual machine. So let's see, nano steps, let's say, nano is a text editor in Linux. And okay, we might have Linux OS, we might have Windows OS, or we might have Mac OS. In any of these three operating systems on our laptop, we can have two solutions for the visualization. So, the first one is VirtualBox, which is really cool. The second one also, which is also cool, is VMware. So, VMware Player, of course. VirtualBox is totally free. We can use it on any operating system that we have. And VMware Player also is the home edition of the VMware software. And we can use it for our purpose in this course in here. So let's continue and see what should we do. So before moving forward, I just wanted you to have a tour over what we want to do in this uh, ethical hacking course. We want to have our attacker machine set up. So let's go to the steps again. So steps first is set up the, let's say virtualization tech. Second, we want to install our attacker OS, which means the operating system that we want to use as an attacker in our laboratory, of course, as an ethical hacker. So it's going to be Parrot Security OS, or it can be Kali Linux, of course. Both of them are great. This is newer than Kali Linux. They have some benefits over each other, but we are going to install Parrot OS and refer you to our courses uh, free videos for the Kali Linux installation. You will see what I mean. So after setting up the attacker, we have to install our victims or victim OS. Something like that. We are going to install Metasploitable 3, the Win2K8 version and also Ubuntu version. So these machines are intentionally vulnerable. There's a lot of services on them we can work with. Also, we will introduce to you the HTB environment. So HTB environment with a lot of vulnerable machines. So these two solutions are in front of us for setting our lab environment. So every lab environment has some attackers and some uh, simulated victims inside of it for practicing, of course. Then we are going to work on reconnaissance. So I will say recon which is about detecting attributes about our target. So in every red teaming operation or ethical hacking operation, or let's say penetration testing, we have to do reconnaissance on our target. What are the names? What are the IP addresses or IP address scoops? What are the subnets? Technologies in use, so technologies in use and a lot of other stuff. So we have to know our target. So we're going to work on recon. Then we're going to work on the next step in every it's called hacking process or procedure, which is a scanning. And we're going to discover, so discover open ports, services, all that stuff. Then we go for, so let's say this is service scanning or something like that. And we are going to move forward to vulnerability scanning. 
and here we are going to work with nmap a lot of good switches with nmap which can be used in any ethical hacking project and for the vulnerability scanning we are going to work with nexpose which is really great as a penetration tester or ethical hacker you have to know how to work with nexpose nessus and openbas in most of the cases these three will do all vulnerability scanning or detecting vulnerabilities on your target job for you so they can handle black box penetration tests they can handle gray box and white box ones so especially nexpose is my favorite since it has a trial for 512 targets free of any charge and also one month period of time and it can be repeated again and again so the non-commercial use is okay with nexpose in our environment and we're going to register for a non-commercial license in this lecture of course but anyway it needs eight gigabytes of ram 100 gigabytes of uh, let's say hard disk and if you don't have that i'm going to introduce to you openbas uh, which is a open source vulnerability scanning again on open source vulnerability scanning software of course and it needs two gigabytes of ram and 10 gigabytes of hard disk as a requirement and this is, is all commercial and i think the trial version scans 15 ip addresses and all of them should be private ip addresses no public is allowed but anyway each of them have its strengths and weaknesses anyway let's continue so then we go for exploitations so exploitations which we are going to use meta exploit search exploit or github search for finding proper exploits for our targets in this environment in here then we go to some ethical hacking or let's say red teaming concepts and tools so we are going to use empire version 3 i know empire version 4 is going to come out but empire version 3 is also okay it works with python 3 and powershell version 5 and it has a lot of cool features which we are going to show you so the next step after exploitation is post exploitation which is going to be done with empire 3 so empire 3 for post exploitation pro uh, actually let's say step so post exploitation is done with this tool in here we also have cobalt strike and also covenant and other tools but in here we're going to stick to empire 3 and i will show you how you can uh, get to know this real powerful tool for your ethical hacking projects and where to go for this uh, learning in here so that's what we are going to cover in this uh, lecture in here and let's get it started so let's see how we can install virtualbox and vmware on our environment so VirtualBox download is the search phrase we use. Simply we can navigate to the virtualbox.org slash wiki slash downloads. Here, if your operating system right now on your laptop or PC is Windows operating system, move forward and install this. So you download this exe file right here. It's 100 megabytes. And then you click on it. Next, next install. Everything is fine. If you are on OS 6 or Mac OS 6, you can get the DMG right here again and install it on your Mac. Of course, you know how to install it. If you are on Linux, you can either navigate in here and install whatever yeah, distribution you are on. Or you can simply let me navigate to our shell. So I can do sudo apt update and sudo apt install virtualbox of course and also virtualbox dash dkms so it has some steps to follow let's navigate to our site hackers.exposed and navigate down here on our ethical hacking course right here so it's on udemy you can go and check it out it's a 40 hours course i will explain to you what is going on in here but for now, know that on Udemy, there's a course called Applied Ethical Hacking and Rules of Engagement. Why I told you to come here? We were talking about VirtualBox, of course. So you want to see how to install VirtualBox on your host. 
So this is how to do it. You can, without buying this course, go and click on the preview section. So right here on the second video that is previewed, so you don't have to pay for anything. I see I'm not logged in into my Udemy account. I can see it freely of any charge right here. So click on virtual, virtual environment lecture and follow this lecture all together. It will show you how to install VirtualBox on Linux and also how to install it on Windows. And the Mac OS 6 version is also covered in this lecture in here. Or you might be guided through how to do it. So that's why I wanted you to see this lecture in here and follow the installation of VirtualBox that you download from this uh, download page in here. So that's it about VirtualBox. How we install the VMware version, let's open another tab and search for VMware player download. I'm intentionally showing you the searches because searching in ethical hacking is really important. So VMware player, let's see. Let's see what do we have. So you have to know how to search for what you need, search for your errors. So here is VMware Workstation Player, which is free of charge. As opposed to the Pro version, the player is totally free. So for Windows users, navigate in here. For Linux users, of course, navigate in here. So you see the download is started, it's 215 megabytes. The Linux is also 167 megabytes. So I cancel because I have already downloaded these files and installed VMware on my Linux, of course. So the installation is really simple. You download the file in Windows, click on it, next, next, install. On Linux, you just download it and do chmod plus x to make it executable. So VMware, blah, blah, whatever the name is, uh, dot uh, bundle, I think. The file was dot bundle, something like that. So you make it executable. And then on the next line, you just call it. And this is how you execute this file and install it. So where is the Mac OS version? This is where we have to search again. So I want you to be a good searcher. VMware player for Mac OS. Let's see what do we have. It says we have a Fusion Pro and Player version for this. So this is what I wanted you to see. You can download the Fusion version, but the Player one. So there's a Pro and Player. We want the Player one. So here's the Pro. I think it, you have to pay for it. And the player version is totally free. Register for personal use license. Move forward with this. Download your VMware for your Mac. Install it on your Mac. And get ready for the next part, which is the installation of the attacker machine, as we have on the steps. So virtualization technology was the first one. Let me enable most mood in my Tmux. And so the attacker machine, power to us, and also the victims. All that should be either on VMware or VirtualBox. So that's it. Download VMware, install it on your box, and get ready for the next part. OK, what is next? Let's see our steps. Let me close this. So if you are curious about how to configure this Tmux, this beautiful shell that can be expandable vertically, horizontally, you can, let's say, for example, you have done a set command, something like that, and you want to go up. So in Tmux, you can just navigate through your shell just like a text editor, you see, like this. Control S will search for whatever you want. For example, I can search for prompt, enter, click N, or press N, and find all the prompts in this buffer. In 259 buffer, which is the number of the lines we have, 259 lines, and we are on this line right here, so you see, 139. So Tmux has a lot of features. You can enter a new window in here. You see the uptime of this system, your battery charge, the time and hour, the date, and the user, the host name, whatever you have, it is uh, presented to you. It also, this is the ZSH shell that we have in here. It's totally customizable. So where we can have this shell, navigate to our other course in here. It is also covered in this course, but we have another course about Linux. So in here we cover all these tricks and enhancements and also a lot of basics. So you see more than 200 modern practical Linux tools and also you're going to learn shell scripting somehow 
uh, for your small projects, small to medium projects. So why I wanted you to navigate to this course, there is a part inside the preview also for you without any payments. So on the preview, you can navigate to Linux OS installation lecture. It will show you how to install Kali Linux with the VirtualBox technology. That's it. We have the full explanation in here about how to install Kali Linux on VirtualBox. So your VirtualBox might be on your Mac OS, on your Linux, or on your Windows. It doesn't matter. We show you how to install Kali Linux over that, over the virtualization technology of VirtualBox. So just navigate to the udemy.com and go for applied Linux command line and shell scripting in the search. Also for our other course, you can search inside udemy.com for applied ethical hacking and rules of engagement and go for the preview lecture and see it without any charges. But in here, you can also navigate to the hackers.exposed, which is our website and follow the uh, links in here for your previews. So let's continue to have VMware technology for the installation of Parrot OS because the Kali Linux with VirtualBox is covered in here and I just want you to see something new than these previewed lectures. We are on step number two, Parrot OS security or Parrot security OS installation. So we covered Kali Linux with referring you to that link and please go and see that, it's really cool. Let's cover the Parrot Security OS. So I'm assuming that you have installed VMware on your box. Regardless of your host operating system, you have the VMware technology with you. So run it and continue with me. So here we have VMware Player. Let's run it. And yeah, here is the VMware application. I want to create a new virtual machine. So again, on any operating system you are, the steps on your VMware app is the same. Use SOMH as the source of the installation. So my source address is in here, but there's a note. There is Parrot Security OS ISO file, and I haven't shown you how to download it for now. It's really simple. Let's navigate back to our browser and yeah, go to Google, search download Parrot Security OS and for the Kali part if you wanted to install Kali as it is explained in this preview lecture down here but again I want you to just see it with me you just say download Kali Linux that's it it will show you the download link for the ISO file you have to go and grab yeah it says virtual box 64 bit oh it will give you the OVA also, you can import it inside VirtualBox or VMware, so no installation is needed. And bare metal is when you want to install it yourself. So here's the installer. You can download the file. It's 4 gigabytes for 64-bit version. And we have 32-bit also. You can, uh, I think, find that somewhere in this page. But anyway, that's the Kali part. We have covered that. I just want you to go to the parrotsec.org slash download and here is the Parrot OS download page get home edition it has a not security related edition and a security specific or focused version also in here so go get security version select the server I think it can be done automatically yeah right here you see down the page the ISO file is addressed go and download this file and come back to this video uh, I think it's about yeah 4.2 gigabytes so download this and come back, uh, I mean pause the video, download this and come back to this lecture in here. Okay, I assume that you have downloaded the ISO file, address it in your VMware player as use ISO image. Click next. It says what is the guest operating system. So it is Linux. And the base of Kali Linux and Parrot OS, both of them are the Debian distribution. So Debian 10x, 64-bit is my choice. Next. You could also choose generic Linux. You see in here, other Linux, and you just specify the kernel version. So 5.x and later kernel, 64-bit. You can also click that. Next. So the name of the machine is 
attacker parrot sec os and it says i'm going to store this virtual machine in this address home two pages my username and the vmware folder next so maximum disk size is eight gigabytes i'm going to increase it to 100 gigabytes since next pose needs at least 100 gigabytes of disk space also as a precaution i want to increase it to 120 and i wanted this to be a single file not multiple files so customizing the hardware you can customize that how much ram 248 but the problem is we need 8 gigabytes of ram for next post so i'm going to increase it to 8000 about 8 gigabytes my laptop has 16 gigabytes of ram so it's okay to increase it to 8 gigabytes if you don't have enough memory for this part just enter 20 48 for four gigabyte for two gigabytes of ram and then move forward with the rest of the lectures and for the next post part you will not be capable of installing it because it needs at least eight gigabytes and you have to go for the installation of open bass which is totally explained in our yeah it's called hacking course right here so i have the ram i put 8000 it's okay the processors it can be whatever number of processors you support you can visualize cpu performance counters so the cd-rom is simulated with this iso file the networking is nat it is okay the sound card and others everything is fine let's move forward automatically power on this machine after creation this of course so Control alt enter will enter full screen mode for this machine so we have live mode, terminal mode, persistence, encrypted persistence, and others. We have install, and we have advanced options. So we go to install, standard installer, install with GTK. I think graphical install is the best. So I can press Control Alt to have my mouse again and unpin this. So we can pin or unpin this part. This is the installation of PowerTOS again. So you see the display of this virtual machine is really small and we will fix these problems with VMware tools after the OS is installed. You will see what I mean. The language is English, United States, American English. You choose whatever you want based on your language and desired settings. So it supports most of the languages. So it's detecting the network hardware. It says, enter the root password. I put the password of password for now. Enter it again, password of password, next. Okay, you have to create a user, so Paratoas will work with that. For the name, I want to enter hackers, something like that, or hackers.exposed, which is our domain. You can put Kevin, Michael, whatever you want. The username, I want it to be hackers. Yeah, it is accepted. So choose a password. I put the password of password again. You put a strong password if you want. So the time zone, the Eastern, no problem. Continue. So it's detecting disks. You go for the partitioning part, which is real simple. It is guided or you can encrypt it. I don't want to encrypt for now. For our Kali Linux installation on that preview lecture in our course, in our other course, you will see the encrypted installation also. But in here, I want to continue with defaults. So write changes to the disk, yes, continue. Everything is fine. It will do the partitioning for us and get ready to install the OS on that. So you see, installing the system, it starts to transfer all the files as the kernel of the Linux, uh, the core system tools or packages that is required for the linux os to be up and running and also a lot of secondary tools or security tools for the pirate os for the purpose of our ethical hacking projects penetration testing projects or red teaming projects so we will wait until this copy process is done so this might be your first time uh, facing an operating system of linux if you want to know more this is no advertisement, I'm just telling you, there's a lot of videos here and there, but uh, we have a great Linux course in here, which you can follow. It's about nine hours, I think. Yeah, nine hours on demand videos. 
So until these files are copied, let's have a tour. So introduction to Linux shell, we will introduce to you what is kernel, OS installation and all that. We will tweak our terminal, so our ZSH, Tmux, Terminator, all that is covered. We will see how to install packages, file archiving. Command line chaining is explained to you in 20 minutes, 23 minutes. So what is the system hardware time examination on Linux? So everything about Linux is in here. The disk, the file system permissions, what are they, how to work with them, the processes, the services, how to manage the users, the networking, which is really important inside Linux. We have a preview also in here. Various tunnels, how to do that. We talk about IP tables, which is the firewall. So we will teach you what are the concepts, what is filtering, NAT, Mangle, what is UFW, and all that. So we will get deep on Sysdig. So Sysdig is another package that will help you to have deep system visibility. What is going on in my operating system, in my Linux? So a lot of uh, heavy concepts are covered at the last sections. So we will move forward to as I told you, the cystic part, the shell scripting part, we will write shell scripts, and also uh, what are the Windows subsystems or the cell, WSL in here. There's a lot of good concepts covered in this course which you can follow. Yeah, let's go back to our installation to see what is going on. Still copying data to disk. So I will pause the video and come back after the installation or the copying of data to the disk is done. Okay, as our copying data to disk step is moving forward on our PowerTOS installation, I just wanted you to save the time and go for the download of your victim machines or let's say your laboratory machines. So in here, if you see, we had install our attacker OS, so which is something that we are doing right now. But we have install our victim OS, Metasploitable 3, Windows 2000, so Win2K8, Windows 2008, the R2 version, and Ubuntu 14, I think, yeah, 14, is the VMs in here. Also, we wanted you to go to the HTTP environment, which I will show you, but for now, I will put these addresses in the resources of this lecture, but navigate to this address, app.vagrant op.com rapid 7 boxes metasploitable 3 win2k8 for the windows 2000 r2 and the same address metasploitable 3 ubuntu 1401 so these addresses let's go and see what is going on in here start the download as our installation is moving forward so go to the browser enter the address win2k8 and the same address with ubuntu i think let's check it out yeah ub 1404 so UB 1404. Let's see if the addresses are correct. So they are both correct. You can download these machines. We could do it with Vagrant. Vagrant is an application and also an organization for downloading a lot of VMs. But you can do the installation manually like this. So we are working with VMware. Go and download this file right now. And also for the Ubuntu version, go and download the VMware. So these are the exports of Ubuntu and Windows 2008, which are intentionally vulnerable and they are called Metasploitable 3. So it has VMware Pro version, VMware Player version, all for download. You can import these into your VMware technology or application. And also if you were okay with the VirtualBox, go and download the VirtualBox version. So again, if you are on VMware, download the VMware. If you have VMware Pro, download this one. If you are on VirtualBox, download this one. It's really self-explanatory. This is for the Windows and for the Linux. Again, if you are on VMware, these files. And if you are on VirtualBox, this file right here. So click on it. It will go for the download process. As you see, I'm clicking here. So it will start the download. The files are big. Click on them as the installation is going on. So we have to be multitask to save the time. So I have already downloaded this file, so I can sell it. Pause the video and come back here after your downloads are done. Okay, I assume that you have downloaded the files and ready to move forward with me. So add an extension of the tag to your files. This is what you should do about them. This is how I figure it out. So we put the tag and regardless of the OS you are in, 
open the files with your compression tool whatever if you have 7z if you have winrar or whatever compression tool open these tar files or you can click and say extract if it has on your uh, menu right here if it doesn't open them with your yeah extraction program or let's say archive program compression program and extract the files uh, in the place that you want to import them inside virtual box or VMware whatever it is these are the VMware files I have downloaded because we work with VMware in this lecture or in this course so see it takes a lot of time because it's seven gigabytes I can also open the other one so I will pause the video and come back after this extraction is done okay create two folders one is vin 2k8 right here and the other one is Ubuntu 1404 so this is the Ubuntu one I want to extract it right here and for the Windows I go here and say okay extract it for me in here so it will take some time I will come back as these extractions are done so you do the same on your OS extract these files that you have downloaded from vagrontop.com for so you know what is happening right now we are on let's see we are on the step three which is install our victim OS so the, we are setting up our lab environment this is what is happening in here we have a Windows 2008 and we have a Ubuntu for our laboratory and also we have the entire HDB environment to work with and I will show you how let's go back to the extraction you see extraction is ongoing so here is our folder let's go to our installation of Parrot OS to see what is happening yeah it says install grub bootloader so grub is what manages what OS to boot what kernel to boot first and all that so we say yes install grub for me yes on dev sda so as you see we are multitasking doing multiple things together to be much more productive and efficient so finishing the installation that's how easy you can install parrot os or Kali Linux, of course, the installations are the same, but you have the preview of that lecture to follow if you had any problems. So let's get back to our folder, to the extraction. You see it is done. So the extractions are done. Let's navigate back, close these yeah, archives, and also the Parrot OS installation is completed. So continue, it will restart the machine. So it's okay. Let's go to our folder. Yeah, we have Parrot OS, Kali Linux ISO files, and we have Ubuntu folder right here and Windows folder right here. So with VMware, it's only enough for us to run the VMX files. So we run the VMX files and VMware player will do the rest for us. Okay, I have turned off my Parrot OS uh, operating system inside VMware. So let's go to the Ubuntu. As you remember, we extracted the files and we say open with VMware Player. That's it. It will start the machine for us. So it's an Ubuntu 14.04 version with a lot of vulnerable services ready for us to exploit. So momentarily, yeah. The username and password is Vagrant. Vagrant on both operating systems. So I will do sudo if config. You see the IP address is uh, 192.168.85.131. So let's note that right here, the Parrot attacker machine. So 192.68.85. This was 130. Let's copy this. Ubuntu Meta 3 machine is one and of course i think the windows 2008 meta 3 machine would be the next ip based on dhcp technology or protocol so that's it these are our ip addresses let's turn off this machine for now yes so let's power it off it seems to have problem power off yes and go for the windows so right here Go to the Windows folder, 
and say run VMX file with VMware player. I personally like VirtualBox over VMware, but in here we just wanted to have a different way of working with technologies regarding virtualization. So the windows will be starting momentarily. It says send control out delete to me. I can enter administrator or vagrant. Both of them are administrator users or join to the administrator group. The password of both are vagrant. And as you see, it is up and running. So I close this one, open another, let's see, VM, VMware player. And you will see our machines are imported. We have the profiles. Everything is fine. So Parrot OS, Meta Exploitable this, and Win2K8. So for the Ubuntu one, let's see the settings. So it has two gigabytes of RAM in my environment, one CPU. The network adapter is NAT. Everything is fine. Hard disk was 40 gigabytes. So the Windows machine is preparing my desktop. So the Windows OS is also up and running and ready to be exploited or do ethical hacking uh, techniques on it. So power off this one, yes. And that's it. We have the VM set up and we are ready to go for the next steps. Okay, so we wanted to have HTTP environment with us. So I want to explain to you what it is. So hack the box or HTB is, yeah, hacktheBox.eu. This is the environment that will give you a lot of options to work with. It has a lot of machines, a lot of challenges to work with. You see, you do an open VPN connection to their environment after sign up. It is totally free. It has some, uh, subscriptions for various types of features, for retired machines, for professional laboratories and stuff like that. But there is a lot of free machines, challenges, end games, and a lot of stuff to work with. So on our ethical hacking course, uh, we have a section about uh, doing practical pen tests with CTFs. So you see in here, we will work on a lot of machines inside HTB. We have a preview also for one of them which in this video, we write a powerful Python script for doing exploitation on one of the machines. It will do some brute force and also injection at the same time. So there's a Python code or coding going on in this video, as you see in here. So we are solving a machine inside HDB in this lecture in here. But let's continue with our laboratory in here. We have a Parrot OS, we have Ubuntu and Windows 2008 all together. So we will continue on reconnaissance, working with some cool tools and see how we can extract information regarding our target. Okay, one of the steps in any ethical hacking project or procedure is to do reconnaissance on the target or uh, they say let's do recon on this target. So reconnaissance is about finding what we are facing in this project, which means what are the domains, what are the uh, IP address scopes or network scopes, what are the uh, services in use, what are the emails, the technologies, whatever you can gather from your target without actively doing or sending packets or stuff. So that is called reconnaissance. As much as information as you can is gathered in the reconnaissance step from the target. So we have multiple uh, online websites that will help us to do that, do the reconnaissance step. But in our other course, which I addressed at the beginning of this video, we have a section for reconnaissance. And there we will explore uh, the OSINT framework with a lot of uh, resources and tools on it, which will help us to find important aspects of our target. I mean, as much as information as possible from our target. But in here, I want to uh, show some of the interesting queries that we can do on online sites, which have a lot of information on them. So the first one, as you might have heard, is Shodan. So Shodan is a website that gathers information from the internet, especially vulnerabilities. So let me do this English. And we have, so Shodan might be known, 
but we have a github so github.com i want to search in github for awesome so awesome showdown queries to demonstrate how powerful showdown can be so this uh, repository jake jarvis has some of the interesting queries that is possible on uh, showdown it's somehow old about one years ago or something like that yeah 14 months ago but still effective so for example this uh, query in here in showdown will show you the automatic license plate readers on the internet which you might have access to so if i do search on this i will find instances of this application listening on a specific port so you see in different countries these are in the united states so again we have other types of queries that can be done this one is searching for some satellites so you see reconnaissance is information gathering these queries can be customized to just run on your target i mean you will search your target for for example cameras on protected vnc's for example we can customize or direct this query to our customer but in here we are just generally running on the internet to see if the query has outputs so in here you can find unprotected vnc appliances or instances on the internet so you see we can just get into these vnc's as easy as that because they are not protected with any passwords so let me do the search and here it is as you see authentication disabled on this ip address so if i do vnc to this ip address in here i will be on its console i mean i will have vnc console access which is unauthorized right now we don't have authorization to do uh, i mean login on these or vnc access on these servers but anyway this is just a demonstration of how powerful these online websites or big data databases can be when you want to do reconnaissance on your target or on your customer. So you see a lot of uh, other queries are available to you. You can find the MongoDB appliances on the internet. So you see this number of databases are detected on the internet or Mongo Express web GUIs. So imagine that you have a variability on this web GUI and you want to find the instances of your customer I mean instances of Mongo Express and then go for the exploitation. So this is where you go. You go to the showdown, do your query, but you direct it to your customers, network, domain, or IP addresses. So, and you see showdown gives you a lot of information, the IP address, the general information about it. So you see this is the address, the country is Denmark. And so we are not doing any active uh, assessment on this target because we don't have authorization to but showdown will show us a lot of information in here and we want to just demonstrate that and this server is vulnerable because of this port right here 5901 VNC service is vulnerable and showdown just detected this so you are not authorized to do any VNC connection to this target but I just wanted to demonstrate how dangerous this can be so you want to find Docker APIs Android devices, Cisco smart install. So I remember there is a vulnerability on a smart install of Cisco. So if I search for this, let's see. I think there's an exploit for it or a vulnerability for it. So a smart install exploitation tool. You see, there's a tool for it, Cisco smart install. So imagine that you are doing assessment on your customer and they want to see if their Cisco devices are vulnerable. This is one of the queries you do right here. So I can also query that. I think we have to log in because, yeah, it is limited to small number of queries if you are not logged in. But anyway, you can search for this like this and say, for example, IP dot address is equal to your target address or something like that. I don't recall the query, but it's something like that. We can search for it. So a smart install client active, it found about 90,000 results from these countries and the top ports are 47 86 and this one so the organizations are korea telecom and others so see these are or can be uh vulnerable to this specific 
variability in here. And we can, as I told you, we can add IP, something like that, address is equal to our customer uh, IP address. So this will be limited to our customer's IP addresses. And this is what happens when we want to do reconnaissance on our client. So for example, imagine that you want to do assessment on ExpressVPN, which is an organization that has uh, exp uh, that has VPN service on the internet and they are also on bug crowd so they let you find any vulnerabilities and report to them so you want to do reconnaissance you can search in showdown with a lot of queries so the next service that I wanted to tell you or show you is Google hacking database so the Google itself so we need a query database to do Google hacking and Google hacking is just like when you do research on the Google to find information from a specific target again. So doing reconnaissance again, somehow. And let's do github.com OPS disk. So this is a repo I found that has, there's a lot of it that I found uh, Google Dorks. It is called Google Dorks. So let's go to Google here. And these queries are called Google Dorks. Uh, what is the address? this one to see passive google dork or let's say passive reconnaissance of course the dorks are in here to see for various kinds of queries we have uh, dorks in here also in exploit db we have a part called ghdb which is for yeah it is right here google hacking database which is for doing dorks on google so again you can customize these queries to your customer and do the reconnaissance with it. So for example, let's see, network or vulnerability data, sensitive directories, dorks. You see, all these dorks are for finding sensitive directories. We can customize or we can, uh, let's say, script these dorks and direct them to our customer, something like that. You see, all these can show you vulnerable services or stuff like that too. Let me just browse one of them. So you see authorized keys are just accessible on this specific service, which we are not authorized to access. So for that reason, I just close this one. Always try to stay legal. Here we just want to show that Google dorks are powerful. They can do queries for you. So you see authorized keys again, and we are not again authorized to access. But in here, on ExploitDB, which contains a lot of exploits, articles, and stuff like that, you can do Google hacking searches. So for example, here, I want to search for SMB. So here, file containing juicy information. I can open this dork. It will have explanations and stuff. But let's say passwords. I want dorks with passwords. So, Excel files on the internet with password that takes the less name on it. So it says, the dork is this. The description is, the Google dork lists out sensitive information. So again, don't run this on the internet. You are not authorized to do that. Just, you have to direct this, for example, on your customer. In URL, customer.com, something like that. If you are authorized to test customer.com. So I'm just showing you how to do these reconnaissance on your target. So this is all passive. And by passive, we mean we don't directly work with our client, work with our target. So let's see if any password files are accessible. There might be. So there might be a file on this page or something on this page. We had an SMB, there are SMB configuration files, including information about the network, trust relationships. So this is the dork that you should use. Let us do that. Let's go in Google. So you can also use this GitHub. It has a lot of cool dorks, but ExploitDB is much more complete. Let's see. Yeah, we got the SMB conf of this server. Again, SMB conf of another server here. So I think it is prove that how much powerful GHDB can be or Google Hacking Database. So again, search for whatever juicy information you want. It's about, let's say, wow, a lot of pages. 
you can customize your dorks as a penetration tester or a tical hacker and again you can script them so whatever because customers are a lot you will have banks financial institutions insurance companies uh, even somehow sometimes governmental organizations and stuff so you can customize your scripts and dorks or recon tools and then whatever customer brings in the targets or domains and ip addresses you can run all those queries for those customers so i hope this makes sense this was GHDB. We have another interesting uh, big data database, let's say, to search for, to do reconnaissance on. And it is called Binary Edge. And Binary Edge is super cool. First, it is free. It says pricing, but the default is free. You can work with it. Just like Census, we will see Census in a moment. So you search for GitHub sometimes. Searching in Google is really important. You should learn to find whatever you want. You can say GitHub, and then you can say binary edge cheat sheet. So here you see the binary edge cheat sheet, as simple as that. With a simple search, I got what I wanted. After this, we will go to census, which is another database. Okay, product open SSH. Search inside the banner. Let's start from the beginning. Port open binary uses modules that mean, for example, for RDP. Port 3389 means show me the open ports on this port on the internet. You will get type RDP, type service, and stuff like that. So we can do that. With this, we can search. Let me see. App.binaryh.io services query. Query is equal to this, but we should sign up. Let's do a sign up quickly. Okay, I have done the registration. You just give it an email with your main email or temporary email, something like that. And then you can do click on this and we'll do the search for you, the search query. So this will show us all the open ports of RDP 3389 on the internet. So 34 million IP addresses was detected and the services, 6 million of them are Microsoft terminal services. The countries, the ASN numbers, and you see every one of them so you see it has no limitations on the page I'm on page 4 and I can filter on a lot of things queries can be combined together so on your target you can say for example this and then limit the IP address of whatever IP address they have so you can add their IP addresses here for example 217, 218 uh, blah blah something like that and we will do the query on these IP addresses for you. So this IP address does not exist, I think. Maybe the subnet will be come up. But anyway, direct these queries to your target, to your customer. Product version for Nginx. Looking for SCADA in a specific country. Firewalls. So looking for Citrix VPNs, Pulse VPNs, Palo Altos. Looking for Cisco's. Cisco's with web access. These queries are really uh, gold because we should do a lot of scanning and a lot of active reconnaissance to find this information on our customer. But this will give us the whole data with a, a simple query, especially with these cheat sheets. So, Bluekip is a vulnerability on RDP. You can search for Bluekip again on your customer's subnet IP address. So all these IP addresses that you see in here, all these about 400,000 IP addresses, are vulnerable to this Bluekip vulnerability. It's a vulnerability on RDP. So for example, this one you can enter and see, again, the results. It has all these ports open. But as Binary Edge was scanning them, found out that the RDP version is totally vulnerable to Bluekip. So that's it with uh, Binary Edge. Again, you see the Cisco devices with web access are shown to us with this query. You can do a lot with this Binary Edge. Let's go to Census. So Census is the next reconnaissance tool or online reconnaissance tool that we can use, which is really great. I use it in my projects, especially in red team projects or ethical hacking projects, but 
you see for example on expressvpn.com you can do a search on it and find all the servers with expressvpn on their certificates on their ip address with information so you see without any scanning without any active scanning i get this amount of information about this target um, if we imagine that we have we are authorized to test expressvpn of course which we are because it is on but crowd and a lot of its servers are authorized to be tested under bug crowd uh, terms of course but anyway here we can search for for example YouTube you can find a lot of things you can search on hosts on certificates I myself do this for example I put my uh, com uh, customers IP address something like that for example this is an example uh, I give it the CIDR range and go for whatever I can see from them so I first do the search to see what open ports exist so this one doesn't exist let's make this range a lot bigger so a slash 16 to see if we can find anything this is just an example so the services around 800 HTTP services this amount of SMB services so for example the first thing that I go for are the variable webs and SMB services of course so these two are really important you can go for FTP, open FTPs, anonymous access, open VPN vulnerabilities on the target, testing the RDPs, the database says. So with these reconnaissance tools, we can get a lot of information from our customer, of course. So the last uh, item that I wanted to show you is uh, the Recon NG. So Recon NG is an uh, application that can help you do reconnaissance on your target so we do recon-ng and it is something like uh, metasploit and stuff you can say for example modules modules search you see search modules no modules found search installed modules nothing was found we can say marketplace search and you see a lot of modules are available to us for example recon companies contacts via Bing LinkedIn and cash again contacts with census email addresses so these modules are customized to be used in a again pen test or red team project and I want to install them all so I say marketplace install all it will install all the modules for us but in here let's yeah let me run it again I want to marketplace install for example hacker target I want to install this module not all of them you can install all of them it will take some time so this is installed we can say modules load hacker target no tab completion is available do info it says okay this guy wrote this module description says uses hacker target.com API to find host names updates the host table with the results the source we say options set source to for example expressvpn.com run so with this module in here we can find the subdomains of expressvpn backend outbound email server admin and others so you can run all those so marketplace search all those modules what was it marketplace oh we are in hacker target should get back and run it again so all these modules are uh, accessible to you free of any charge so you see installed are these ones you can do important maps we can search for credentials, domains, contact profiles. So Recon G is just great. You can search in GHDB for vulnerabilities on your customer. For example, census IPs can be queried with this specific module in here. This is the updated date of the module. You see a lot of them are updated periodically. So 2021, this one, census net block. You can scan net blocks with this. SSL scan and others. So this is what we do in reconnaissance. Get back to our course and pass the reconnaissance section. There will be a lot of information there. We have a specific section for this part in there.
Okay, let's continue on the next step in ethical hacking, which is called the scanning in brief. Scanning is when you do, after reconnaissance, after you have found the IP addresses, the domains and all that, whatever passive information you can get, we go for the active step, which is called the scanning. So in the scanning part, you do a scanning on your IP addresses, target IP addresses and domains with regards or with the purpose of finding open ports, vulnerabilities on them, service detection, OS detection, trace routes, all will be done in this step in here. So first, let's test if our targets are up and running. So turn on your Windows 2008 Metasploit Oval 3 and Ubuntu 1. So those two machines should be turned on on this step. Ping them. In my environment, the IP addresses are 131, 132. So look at the TTLs. This one is the Windows. This one is the Linux one because the TTL of 64 is Linux. TTL of 128 is Windows. Let's continue. This is how we do Nmap scanning based on experience. I will explain every step in here or every option in here. So first we need sudo for some of the operations and map is wants to done with network packets. sudo and map. The first thing that we tell and map in a lot of situations is dash pn. So before explaining what is dash pn, I want to tell you you can find a lot of things yourself with the help of manuals and helps in Linux. So you can say not sudo and map dash dash help. A lot of important options and uh, features are explained here with their switches. So, for example, let's grip for uh, pn. See if it is explained. Yeah, thread all host as online. So we will thread all this host to be online, and we don't do any host discovery. Host discovery is when you ping the target, when you arp the target, in order to detect if it is live or not we can do in map again this is the same but if you get the man of this great tool it, there will be a lot of information presented to you so go and explain this part or refer to our course they are all explained in there or refer to any resource online available dash pn is thread everything as host is live without any pings and stuff like that and then we continue to do no reverse dns lookups so nmap does reverse dns lookups on the ip addresses we don't want to do that it will take a lot of time on internet uh, targets it is somehow logical to do that but when you are on your lab or on HTB or something like that it's not really needed to do that then we go for the type of scanning we say dash s s which is seen as still so scanning then we say do version detection for me, then I say do OS detection for me, and then after that I tell or instruct Nmap to do scans with some NSC scripts. So NSC scripts are also some Lua written scripts that will help Nmap find additional information or vulnerabilities about the target. Then we go for to be verbose. I want to see only open ports, not closed ports, not filtered ports. And then I say 192, 168, uh, 85, 131, and again, the same IP address, 132. So let's see if we can add any other options in here. So the next option I want to add is scan all the ports. So I can specify scan 1 to 65,535, I think, was the whole TCP ports. And you also UDP ports are the same. You can say scan from port number one through port number 10,000, which is something we do in Hack the Box or CTF environments. Ports are always below this one, 10,000. Uh, we can do, if you don't specify anything, Nmap will scan the top 1,000 famous ports or most used ports. You can specify dash capital F to have uh, the top 100 ports as opposed to the thousand ports by default. So let's go by default. You can get a report from your scan with uh, lowercase o, capital case A, and say, I want to report in here in the current directory, metasploitables nmap 03 June 2021. That's it. Let's launch the scan to see what happens. Put the password. So you see open ports are 
split to us as it goes on this is because of dash lowercase v here which says be verbose okay service detection is ongoing scanning was done service detection is because of this option here dash sv any clicks on the map console will print the status 79 percent our scan or service scan will be done momentarily so as this goes on control shift t let's zoom in do i have my command no let's copy the command so i need this command again i want to do nsc scans so it's a good idea that you see nsc scans in here a lot more quicker but with nsc Instead of default scripts, we specify the shesh scripts and we say will. This will scan for vulnerabilities for us. And also I will add timing of insane to be much more faster this time to see what is the difference. Let's move on. Put the password. So NSC scripts on the other scan, the old scan is ongoing. These are default scripts, but this one will search for vulnerabilities for you. It will come back after the scans are done. Okay, now as you see the scans are done, you wait for your scans to be done and continue with me. So here, Nmap scan report for this IP address, host is up, the port 21 stayed open, service FTP, the version of the service. So these have a lot of explanations to do. You have to search for the version for the CVEs, how to search for the exploits, everything is uh, analyzable and researchable which you should learn how to look for it the port 22 port 80 the file names that are detected so these are NSC scripts results on port triple one port 445 this port right here which is cops printers and others so this is a default NSC script results in here and also for the Windows one you see other results we have results in here the type of the OS is also detected at the end, right here. It's a general guess. But in here, service info, Windows Server 2008 R2. So the Windows OS version is detected. Was the Ubuntu one detected too? Let's see. Here we are. Yeah, right here. From this banner, you can understand that it's an Ubuntu 14.01.04. But devices general purpose running Linux this version so these are all nodes from the kernel we can understand if you are facing an updated Linux or server or operating system or you are facing an outdated one which can be exploited in a lot of ways also in a privilege escalation way after you get an initial access to the target so there's a lot to this uh, we have the Windows results and other information here. If you get LL, you see here we have meta exploitable uh, reports in here. So less on the Nmap report. There's a way you can uh, transfer the XML file to an HTML to a HTML and have that on your pen test report. So here is the NSC script with vulnerabilities. You see it's completely different. It will search for vulnerabilities for you. Again, version detection is stuff, but some enumeration is done on the directories we have possible vulnerabilities you will see momentarily because we used the shesh script vul so you see the cops has vulnerabilities in here three vulnerabilities are indicated again enumeration on the web the web service has a dos vulnerability which might be false positive Moving forward to the Windows One, MS12020 variable, which is blue kip on RDP. You see, variabilities are detected. MS12020 again is reported. Again, another variability on this TLS. So, there is a lot into this, which I highly recommend you to, if you are interested, get in touch with us and find out the longest story with us. Exploiting these services takes a lot of time, so 
we just wanted to be quick in this video and that's how we go on in here but generally you should search for the vulnerabilities within map and also vulnerability scanners such as openvas and nextpose we will demonstrate nextpose here nextpose is much more security defenders style but openvas is much more hacker style it will teach you how to break into the systems but also nextpose do does that with again a lot of other reports beside uh, showing ways how to penetrate the target but in general you have to do reconnaissance you have to do a scanning you have to do vulnerability scanning and then exploitation and post exploitation this is what i wanted to transfer to you in this video or in this course so let's continue we had our end maps again if you get ll the files exist you can refer to them whenever you want and transfer them to various formats and use them in your reports to your customer so we will continue on vulnerability scanning later on okay let's continue on the installation of uh, our vulnerability scanner which is called nextpose in here as i told you we could also go with openvas so openvas vulnerability scanner so the openvas installation is really simple it is also covered in our ethical hacking course sudo apt let's say update sudo apt so i'm inside the Parrot os of course you should be also in this environment or in your Kali Linux, all the commands, everything is the same. So you have to install uh, GVM, I think. Yeah, GVM. And then you say GVM-setup and also GVM all with sudo. sudo GVM-checksetup. And then you do GVM after the setup and check setup was done successfully. It has a lot of up and downs. You say GVM start and everything is okay. Your open VAS is up and running. You can work with it. So it is completely explained in our applied ethical hacking and rules of engagement. But in here we are working with, uh, of course, Nextpose. So navigate to the rapid7.com slash products slash Nextpose slash download. It has inside VM, which is much more powerful, and it has Nextpose. So it has a free trial as i told you nextpose is really great it really covers black boxing and white boxing penetration testing so black box is when you don't have any information about the target it really does a great job in finding vulnerabilities in this way and white boxing or gray boxing is when you have credentials you have some kind of access to the target and then you scan the target with credentials i will show you what i mean we will have black box and white box penetration testing all together in this very uh, course in here or lecture in here. So the full name, we say hackers. Uh, the last name, we say exposed. So you can put your name, of course. You should put your name. And I do navigate to mail.tm and uh, actually copy this temporary email. You can put your Gmail. I think Gmail is not accepted. You have to have some kind of yeah, let's say test.signgmail.com. It's not going to be validated, for example. So you should put some kind of organizational email or some kind of temporary emails in here. The company is something or testing. This is for testing purposes. And I put some default uh, telephony in here. I don't want to get anything. I just want to test the software and present it in here. So no production use is uh, actually done in here. It will uh investigate my email and my information and then yeah i can go for the download of the windows version 64-bit or the linux version so you see down here rapid 7 setup dash linux 64. so go for the download right now and get this bin file for your pirate os to be installed in here and also in this uh, temporary email or your organizational email you should wait for a license for a one month or 512 hosts uh, actually a limitation of license in here so it will give you a serial number that you can enter inside your uh, Nextpose uh, installation of course so you see the license is presented to us I will use this license so it cannot be used by you but you get another license for yourself either via this temporary email or within your organizational email so pause the video, go for the download of this file, and come back in here. Okay, I assume that you have downloaded the file. Let's navigate to the downloads. I have downloaded also the file. So sudo 
let me just open another tab paste the license so we have it sudo dot slash first you should make it executable sudo chmod uh, a plus x this file so all these linux tricks and concepts are covered in our linux course of course and enter this one sudo dot slash the name of the file so we are installing our uh, actually vulnerability scanning software in here so next it's really easily installed it's going to be installed in this address the port change the port to 5431 move forward the name is hackers exposed company is something username is hackers password is the password of password it's very weak no problem next initialize and start after the installation i don't want to do that next so go for the installation and come back after this loading is done okay as you see the installation is complete you can navigate to it through this address so can we copy it 3780 so https localhost 3780 you have the address in here and finish and you see the service is not up and running for now so let's close all that navigate back in here cd to the op rapid 7 nsc we don't have it next pose nsc so here's the address that we should run the core of the program so sudo nsc.sh and of course i should put dot slash nsc.sh and then after the program was up i will enter this uh, license in here so it will take a lot of time to start it has a lot of updates to get and stuff like that let's run it to see what happens So the program will do its job downloading a lot of stuff, setting up the environment, and will ask us for the license key momentarily. So we will come back after all this process is done. Okay, as you see, the first initial setup work is done, the packages are updated and installed, and we are moving forward to doing a login. So hackers, the password, whatever username and password you set enter it here so it will ask us for the license serial number and i had to change the serial number or license number for some reason so i copy the new one you just enter your email serial number you see it asks for the activation key paste it click activate so it will activate your license along with updating a lot of packages and vulnerability definitions, policies and stuff like that. So wait for it. It will download a lot of packages. You see, it is downloading update ID something and an access token for downloading that file. All that will be done. Here will be a message and we will come back after this part is done. Okay, as you see now, the updates are done. We have entered our license key, which is for 30 days or 512 hosts to be uh, scanned or be assessed so let's move forward and log into the application and see what is going on the username was hackers the password was password and let's have a tour over this great vulnerability scanner so you see this is the dashboard of this application you have the risks and assets over the time you have your sites the scans that have been done before, the asset groups, asset tags, and stuff like that. So the first thing that I want to show you is notification area. If you go here, it will uh, redirect you to the Rapid7 website for buying this application, of course, and having a better version there, because this one is limited to 512 hosts or one must of usage. Well, you can uh, reactivate this license again by requesting another license, just how I told you to do that, and get another license in your email, enter it, where I will show you here. 
So this says the security console has been updated for the new vulnerability coverage, which means we are updated to the latest updates. So we go to the news content. This will show us some information regarding that we have the latest updates, but these uh, lines in here will redirect us to the admin page. On the admin page, we have a part called administer. In the administer, you see we have the version information and the updates. So you can click on updates, start. If you come back to console, you see it will search for a lot of uh, new updates and stuff like that. So one note, let me control shift T, sudo system CTL status, next pose. So if you run this command, put the password, you see it says loaded and active is inactive dead. That's because I have done and stop on the application after the restart of my operating system and because it is running by default. So if I restart this Parrot OS and get a, a status in here like this, let me, yeah, it will say that it is running on the background. But because I wanted you to see these uh, lines in here and see how the updates are done and what is going on behind the scenes, I rather to uh, enter this directory as we, as we saw and run the uh, nsc.sh application myself. So, Long story short, after the restarts, you don't need to go to this directory and run that search file, and the expose will be running automatically. And if you want to check that, you will run the status, you can run stop, start, and stuff like that. But for now, we have it on this shell. You see, the manual update is done. It was updated, didn't need any uh, packages to be downloaded. We have proxy, authentication, stuff like that, the database, and we have licensing. So you see, zero from 512 assets are scanned and if you fill this one you need to re-enter another license or if your one month is done so you see expiration is friday july 2nd 2021 at this time the license will be over at this time and you see we have everything all the license is full so that's another beauty of nexpose trial version as opposed to the nessus because nessus is really limited in this uh, type of license. So let's navigate to our home, create the site, and scan the two operating systems, variable machines that we set up. Okay, so we are ready to scan our two variable machines. Let's control shift T. My IP address is, as you know, it was 85830, and uh, Linux one or the Ubuntu Ubuntu Exploitable 3 is 85131. You see, it's accessible. 132 is the Windows 2008 R2 vulnerable machine, and I have access to both machines in here. So let's continue and do a vulnerability scan in here. Vulnerability scan is an important part inside any uh, ethical hacking process. So either you do it manually or by tools, and in here we want to do it by tools. So I put it meta exploitable three machines scan. So if your resources are limited, just start your Parrot OS in your VMware or your virtual box and also start one of the uh, vulnerable machines such as the Windows one or the Linux one scan it and after it was finished scan the other one but in here I have both machines running on so I can scan them simultaneously so the IP address is 131 the first one 132 the second one so here you specify the assets you can choose a file which contains the assets one line by one or line by line. If you have any credentials, you can add them here. So for example, I can say SSH access and define credentials here. So I want to have a full uh, vulnerability scanning going on in here and see the results. So this can be done on your red teaming, on your penetration testing, vulnerability assessment, or hardening projects. So the username is Vagrant. The password is Vagrant. Again, Vagrant. And it says, do you want me to do elevation with sudo? Of course, you can do that. The elevation user also is Vagrant. Its password is Vagrant again. So you can test the credentials. For example, you can say, test these credentials on 85. What was the Linux? I think this was. Test the credentials. Testing the credentials. 
and you see authentication succeeded. And I think the Windows machine is also running a SSH server service, and this might be correct on that. Maybe, I don't know. But I will, no, it's not. So sudo is not working. No problem. Create this one. And I want another credential, so add SMB creds. This is really great. You can customize this tool as you want or whatever you want. So there is no domain. The username is administrator. The password is Vigrant. Password is Vigrant. You can test that on 100, 200, 68, 85, 132, 445. Test the credentials. And you see authentication succeeded. So. We can have black box and white box penetration testing or vulnerability scanning both at the same time with this tool with whatever we are doing right here. So you give it credentials. This one will go and check a lot of policies, a lot of checks and stuff like that. And at the same time, we'll do black box vulnerability scanning, which means it will do a scanning with and without these credentials, which is correct. So we have the templates. SCIS is a security standard. You should uh, read about it in our 40 hours course, but denial of service type of scan. DISA is also has a lot of hardening checklists and stuff like that. So we have a lot of things in here. But I want to do exhaustive scan, which has most of these items in here. Or we can do full audit without web spidering. That's also cool. But if you go to, let's see, control and click here, if we go to managing the templates, we see the explanations about these uh, templates, scanning templates and stuff. So let's see. So again, if you have any performance problems, turn off one of the vulnerable machines, for example, have Windows or Linux uh, one at a time, do the scanning and stuff. And after you got the report, you can turn off that and turn on the other machine. That's simple as that. You can create your templates or you can manage the currently created templates. So we have, you see, description for each of them, asset discovery type, service discovery, whether it is safe, uh, what is the source and stuff like that. So CIS is policy compliance test. This is also like that, the of service is self-explanatory. So we have full audit. We have exhaustive right here, performs an exhaustive network audit using only safe checks, including patches, policy compliance checks and stuff like that, performing an exhaustive check could take several hours depending on the number of the hosts. So full audit without web spidering will do a scan without any uh, web interaction. So it will not check for web vulnerabilities and stuff like that. So I want to do what? I want to get a copy of this exhaustive and customize my own template, which is great. We can have customized templates for ourselves and do the scanning with those uh, Templates, for example, I don't want it web spidering in this uh, course or in this video because it takes a lot of time. I don't want any asset discovery to happen, so I consider all the host live. This is due to my experience. I do that on my real projects. Currently, I'm on a project for scanning uh, thousands of services and uh, hundreds of servers for my clients, so this is the tool that I use. CNSTLs, all the possible ports. For the UDP, that was for the TCP. For the UDP, you can check for the well-known ports. You can say do a map service detection for service detection, of course. It will take some time. Discovery performance, vulnerability checks. So you can say performance safe checks. If you click on that or check this item, it will send denial of service or buffer overflows to the targets, which might crash the target. There is explanations all over here. Include potential vulnerability checks which will give us a lot of other potential vulnerabilities. We can correlate the checks and we can use Metasploit for doing the checks. So there's some items in here for scanning uh, databases, mail services and stuff like that, DHCP servers, telnet servers. We have policy-based scannings. So there are no policies available to select because yeah, uh, policy is not selected for this type of scanning here. Let me see. So we don't have any policies in here. But there is CIS, there's DISA and other stuff. So Windows domain policy checks, Unix policy checks and all that stuff. I don't want to get into that for now. 
and keep this as small as possible because it's a uh, mini ethical hacking course. That's it. We have our template scan. So do a refresh here. You will see exhaustive copy. So that's it. We have our template. We can move forward. You can have multiple engines. For, for example, we can install multiple uh, Rapid7 Nixpose scanners and uh, transfer the jobs to them. You can use the Rapid7 Cloud also for if you have the license, of course. The others, the schedule, so you can schedule your scans every week, every month, every day to happen on your assets and give the reports, compare the reports. There's a lot of things that you can do with this tool. I will recommend that for black box, gray box, white box testing, policy compliance, hardening checks, and patch management and stuff like that. By patch management, I mean checking what patches are installed and stuff like that, not installing the patches, of course. So save the scan, save and do the scan, yes. So this will happen, it will go for scanning those two waterball machines and with the report of this scan we will go for the exploitation part which is the next part in our uh, very course so we'll come back after the scanning process is done okay as you see the scan is our scan our customized scan is completed successfully so if there is any errors it will be indicated in here the scan engine was local scan engine as i told you we can use cloud or other engines installed on other servers so this is really great you can distribute your work through multiple engines so the progress was done in this state in this hour total elapsed the scan time is three hours 34 minutes which is a really big time and long time so that's why credentialed uh, exhaustive scans will take a lot of time if you are in a hurry or if you don't want to do uh, true scans you can go for a full without a spider scan or penetration test scan it has multiple types of templates or you can create a template for yourself to be as fast as possible so the number of vulnerabilities are really a lot 2688 vulnerabilities that's because of the credentials we provided to this scan in here if we do a scan without credentials you will see there will be for example hundreds of vulnerabilities for example 200 vulnerabilities will exist in there the scan was done on two assets so the vulnerable ubuntu and windows 2008 it was started on this time and the scan type was manual we have another type called the scheduled so you can schedule your scans that uh, can happen uh, time to time, for example, one day of the week or something like that, which is really great. So the assets are listed in here, 31, 32, the Metasploitable 3, Vagrant 2008 R2, the operating systems are detected, the number of vulnerabilities, the scan duration for each of them, you see the Linux one is really fast, but the Windows took a lot of time to check for example, a lot of registry addresses, patch numbers or versions and stuff like that. So, And even the authentication on the Windows was not fully administrator. It seems like that because you see partial credential success. But for this one, you see credential success. So that's it. We have our scan. Let's go and generate a report. So we should learn how to generate reports. It's in this menu. It says reports. We can generate reports in multiple formats. Again, which is unique to Nexpose, of course. You can create detailed technical reports. You can create uh, executive summary reports or remediation reports and stuff like that. So there's a lot of customization going on in here. You say create report. We say with exploitables, three, Vin and Linux, something like this, Vin and Lin. So let's have this capital format. And always it is a good idea to have dates on your files. So 03-June-2021. So that will be the name. This is the formats that I talked about. So see all, you see, if you hover on all, each of these, you will see the explanation provides comprehensive details about discovered assets, vulnerabilities, and users. We have other types, executive, for view, executive overview, provides a high-level view of the security data, including general results, information and statistic, or statistical charts. High-risk vulnerabilities will be in this report. So you see, compliance 
status policy details one of my favorites is this one top remediation with details if you are working with a customer in a penetration testing or vulnerability scanning project you can go with this because it will tell you very quickly what to do in order to remedy the vulnerabilities uh, I mean it is really quick it really fits the project so that's my experience in situations that you are scanning thousands of services and servers and there is hundred thousands of vulnerabilities this is the place to go for I mean it will tell you for example a hundred lines of uh, best practices or operations that you should do to fix all those hundred thousand vulnerabilities so this is really great this is what you need in your projects anyway uh, our purpose here is to exploit some of these vulnerabilities and I wanted you to see this vulnerability scanner because it's really cool for the production projects or production usage you can buy this product uh, or for your laboratory in here you can just use the evaluation so OpenVAS is great or Nexpose is also great and here we work with next pose of course so select the scan you see I had multiple scans that ran into problems so stop by hackers and this scan is the one that was successful so totally manageable save and run the report so it will generate a report for us momentarily with a lot of pages so I've already generated one before I can use this and this is the one I told you about top vulnerabilities with remediation details so let's see how it is so this is the audit report that we are generating I have already generated this one because it takes some time and this is the top 25 remediations by risk so you see in here it says upgrade the Linux so sudo apt update upgrade this upgrade something like that will fix 271 vulnerabilities if you upgrade TCP dump package, it will fix 161 vulnerabilities. So upgrade to the latest version of PHP will fix 106 vulnerabilities for you. Upgrading Jenkins to the version this, again, about 100 vulnerabilities are fixed. TLS if upgrade Jenkins TLS to this version, again, a lot of vulnerabilities are fixed. So you see, if you update your WordPress, again, 90 vulnerabilities are fixed. So this is how you can quickly fix the top important or uh, vulnerabilities with the highest risks with the quickest time possible when you are facing big companies and you want to do vulnerability scans. So that's it. But if you had time or if the vulnerabilities was not that big, the number of the vulnerabilities was not that big, you can go to the audit details. So you see here we have 8,100 pages for this report it's a detailed report it will talk about various statistics the number of the vulnerabilities how they are shared on the services and then it says discovered and potential vulnerabilities critical vulnerabilities it starts to list them and then after that it will be high vulnerabilities medium vulnerabilities low vulnerabilities and then the info i think and beneath every one of these categories we have the cvs we have the vulnerabilities explained what nodes are affected what cvs are possible to address for this vulnerability you see especially crafted environment variables can be used to inject shell commands so we will this is how vulnerability analysis are done you do research about this cve and then you go for the exploitation and not all the vulnerabilities have or the cvs have pocs or exploit codes publicly so the ones that have you can use for proof of concept and get access from your customer of course when you are authorized to do that so that's how the detailed report with you see additional information in here it's presented to you so you see this vulnerability here says default administrator password vulnerability in here and it says on this address it was possible to log in with admin admin and it says welcome to access to administrator console was seen so that's the proof that the vulnerability exists so that's how this 8000 pages are going on it's a really big report so in the next part we will exploit some of these vulnerabilities to get access on the target with metasploit or other frameworks and then we go for some post-exploitation modules okay now the vulnerability scan is done the report generation is done as you recall we generated two reports with various formats one of them was top uh, vulnerabilities with remediation details 
to say <clears throat> applying 25 remediations, which will remediate 51% of the vulnerabilities and 52% of the risks. 41% of the vulnerabilities have published exploits. This is really important when you are talking to your customer or to uh, your clients. They should know that 41% <clears throat> of their vulnerabilities in their environment have public exploit codes, which means they are easily exploitable on the public. So that's as clear as that. Everyone can download the exploit code and use it against them. So this is what you should explain to them. And 24% of the vulnerabilities that have malware kits also will be fixed, affecting two assets here. So we have the remediation, the number of the assets, and the vulnerabilities that will be fixed, and the rest of the uh, items in here. So first, if you upgrade your Linux, 271 vulnerabilities will be fixed. If you upgrade TCP dump, if you do upgrades up to here, we have uh, reviewed these items, but just again, so you see, if you do remediation on these two pages, it's only two pages, the number of the patches with their KB number, so you can download from Microsoft, will fix half of the vulnerabilities for you. So this is really great when you are facing a lot of vulnerabilities and you don't have time to uh, work on all of them so you will fix the top 25 vulnerabilities with remediation details so if you go down for example this item it says download it from this address and install the patch for Linux the command will be yeah app get upgrade to upgrade curl to the latest version so details are also provided to us but here we seek exploitation. The other report, which is audit report with a lot of details in here, it's about 8,000 pages. Don't afraid the number of the pages because there are a lot of explanations, resources, references to other resources on the internet. So that's why this document is so big. So if I get a report of the vulnerabilities itself, I don't think it will pass 100 pages as a PDF format. So let's see, let's move forward to see what do we have in here. Metasploitable 3, this address. You see, it also has uh, the date on it. Executive summary. So the critical vulnerabilities, severe vulnerabilities, and moderate. We call them sometimes critical, high, medium, low. And uh, categories of the vulnerabilities. We have seen these items before. So two affected nodes. One is Microsoft, as we know, and the other one is Metasploitable 3, Ubuntu machine. So turn on these machines. We want to exploit them. We all exploit a small fraction of all these vulnerabilities on these two machines. And again, on our 40 hours course, we exploit all the vulnerabilities. So everything that is exploitable on these two machines is going to be exploited there it is, I think, two hours or three hours of video just exploiting vulnerabilities. So it's a time-consuming job. You have to read about the vulnerabilities, search on the internet for the CVE, and see how you can exploit it. Some of the vulnerabilities and some of the POCs need some modifications to work. There are some situations and some conditions for them to work. So that's why we have that long videos on that course and this quick videos in here. So the first one is talking about injecting shell commands and this CVE right here. Let's search it inside where? Inside MetaSploit. So run MSF console. This is the console for exploiting vulnerabilities. It has a lot of exploits pre-built into it. Search this CVE. You see multiple items in here. So after a lot of research and try and errors, you come to conclusion that this exploit here is accessible on this target. So the vulnerability is also called uh, shell shock, which is about injecting shell variables to the target. But this time we will inject these variables and get remote code execution via the Apache service here. So use exploit. This item in here, show options. You see, we have multiple exploits to use, two CVEs in here. 
It needs the bin path, which is correct on the target. The remote port is 80. The affected system is this address here. So let's open a Chromium or Firefox. Go to the port 80 of Apache. If you refer to the end maps, port 80 is, let me see. Let, let's chat metasploitables dot nmap grip dash i 80 so give me four lines after four lines before I want to see yeah 80 slash tcp so let's do it like that tcp clean run to control l we clean the page for you and you see here port 80 on uh, that target is Apache HTTP 2.4.7. So this chances are this exploit here will work on it. So set remote host this is correct. It needs us to specify a shell variable, a shell script, path to CGI script on the target. So if you navigate to the target, you see here some PHP files or something like that. But one hidden directory here is called CGI bin. And if you do some word enumeration, directory enumeration on target with GoBuster and stuff, you come to this SH file in here. So it's a default file on CGI scripts or on this Metasploitable machine. So set target URI, Metasploit is not case sensitive, so I can say target URI. It's in capital form. I can say in lowercase. Show options. The payload is the part that we inject to the target after exploitation. So Linux, interpreter, reverse TCP, this amount of, this is my address or your Paratoas address, and this is the port that the victim will connect to. So here you can see what sessions do you have. So here you can see what sessions you have. Nothing for now. You want to exploit. So that shave will background the job, run it, interpreter session one, open. So don't look at this that is exploited so easily. There's a lot of try and errors on the background which I cannot film it on this video because it will be somehow make you exhausted. I mean, there is a lot of try and errors when you are working with an exploit. So we decided to just uh, show you the successful ones, but in your journey, when you are going after a CVE, to find the POC and also to exploit that POC or exploit that vulnerability, you will see how hard that try and errors uh, can be. So, so that's the nature of this step in ethical hacking. So we have access, we can interact with it, get PID, get processes, get help in interpreter. You can do shell, you get a sh the Linux shell here. So who am I? It says dot 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 data, which means we are Apache. And from this point, you, you can go for uh, privilege escalation, which is another concept that is covered in our 40 hours course. But for now, we will background the job or background the session and have it right here. So we got one session from the Linux box. Let's see if we can get a session from the Windows one. So this is a CVE and it says, okay, I ran this command. So it is with credentials and the output was this, which means this target is vulnerable to this is a specific vulnerability. So again, code execution via crafted environment variables. You can search CVEs, you can search names inside Metasploit. There's another tool called, so I want to introduce to you, the search exploit. So with search exploit, you can search for various exploits. As the name comes out, search exploit, for example, Shellshock. Search exploit is not installed, so you have to install search. I think it is in exploit DB package, but let me try this. Exploit DB. We don't have it, so we come back after this is downloaded and installed. As this is getting downloaded, let's go to exploit DB website itself. So this is a place to search for exploits, and also Google is a place to search for exploits. So. For example, this one here, let me copy this here, exploit. With a simple search inside Google, you will be redirected to a lot of pages that you can use. So here it is, exploit DB, 
which I was about to do search on. So I can search on various things in here. Here's the search. So we should search in CVE, search. You see these items are available. But this one right here, we can interact with, or we can search in Google, very simple. Here's the code you can use to exploit the remote target. I think it is written in Python. Yes, it is in Python. Anyway, it's doing some imports for creating sockets and stuff. Again, in our Applied Ethical Hacking and Rules of Engagement course, we have Python hacking also. You will be capable of writing exploit codes, injections, I mean, injection tools, brute force tools, some simple malware, CNCs and stuff like that. So Python is also included in that course. Let's continue. Let's see what else do we have. Let's see if we can exploit our Windows target. So this is our Windows target. It's talking about access default administrative password. The access to administrative admin has password that's set to default, which is access to. It's on port 8282. Let's see. Here it is. This port. Yeah, let me copy this. Copy link address right here. So admin access to nothing. Admin access to and we are logged in. The previous time I put uh, uppercase A, but it was lowercase. So anyway, let's see if we can exploit it. Let's search for this access to to see what it is. So search exploit is now available because exploit DB is installed. We can search for various packages. Search exploit access to. It says local file inclusion is another vulnerability. It's a web vulnerability. Admin session fixation again web application vulnerability. Authenticated code execution via REST metasploit module, and authenticated code execution via SOAP again metasploit. So let's go back to metasploit. Search for access to, and we have the module. Here it is. Use this module. Show options. The path is access to correct. Password is this correct. Port is eighty eighty correct. Oh, port is eighty two. So eighty two eighty two. The username is admin. We don't have SSL. It's HTTP. And Java Metaperter Reverse TCP. Let's run it to see if we get a shell. Oh, remote host hundred ninety two. Yes, this address exploit. Successfully uploaded, pulling to see if service is ready. The login to the console was correct. I mean, successful. So deleting the jar file. Basically, what it does is it logs in to the panel, creates a jar metaperter shell, and uploads it on target, executes it, and then gets a shell in here in a reverse format. So we have a Windows Java metaperter shell, which we can interact with again. Here, get PID. We don't have get PID. Yeah, we have PS. The shell is not that functional yet, but we can go shell. Here we are. Who am I? You are anti authority system. Oh, we have admin access. So, net user, you see, I can interact with all these users. We have access, full access to the target. So, exit from this. Control L, background. So if I get sessions again, you see we have two sessions. One is Metaperter Linux session with the access of www.data, which means Apache access, and with this information here. The other one is Metaperter Windows Java with the machine account access, which means system authority, with these details in here. So we can show targets, we can show payloads. These are the payloads available. But that's it. That's how you get access on a target based on your uh, vulnerability scan. So another note is Nexpose is much more defender style. I mean, people who are working on defensive security projects such as vulnerability assessment and stuff. But OpenVAS, I think I told you this once uh, in this lecture, but I just wanted to emphasize that because OpenVAS is much more aggressive than Nexpose. It will direct you much more faster to getting access from the target as opposed to the next post that uh, cares about you finding the most 
patches, hot fixes, vulnerabilities and stuff. So that's my idea. OpenBus is much more better when you are in a red team operation or something like that, black box pen test. But when you are on a gray box or white box, it's better to use tools such as Nessus and Nexpos. So let's continue to see what else can be exploited. So we are on Windows 2008 R2. Chances are SMB is vulnerable. Let me search inside here for MS17-0 10 yes it is vulnerable so it is talking about uh, go and patch this vulnerability but we can search for this either again via search exploit or meta exploit itself so search what was it ms17-0 10 you see the scanner the other modules are presented but this is the module that we want to use. Use this, we could say use two because the number is two here. Show options. You specify the remote host tar uh, address here, which is 132. We have Windows X64 meter per reverse TCP right here. Let's exploit this vulnerability, which is real famous. That's it, we got the session. So if you get sessions, you see anti authority system here. It's not a Java interpreter, it's a Windows interpreter, so we can do hash dump and stuff. So hash dump will dump the hashes of these users. You can do pass the hash, you can do a lot of active directory. If it is connected to a, a domain controller, you can do a lot of active directory attacks and stuff. So we can load QV, run Kretzal. You see, we get the passwords of various users. These passwords are testing for Metasploitable 3 and are not val that valuable so that's it we got access to the windows box let's get access or get another access on the linux box and finish this exploitation part because we just want to keep this course this mini course as minimized as possible okay so after some readings on this really big report 8100 pages report we found out that pro ftpd is variable on the target there's a variability that can help us copy files to the target. So let's search for it. First, let's search for the CVE. If didn't find it, we will search for the pro FTPD. Search, we have it. So mod copy exec. This is how you link vulnerability scan reports to the exploitation section or to the exploitation step. Show options. It needs the remote host. It's 31. Let's specify the payload. What if you tap, it says I have CMD, Unix, reverse. Let's use Perl. Perl is available everywhere. So the local host is me. The side pad is var dot dot dot, which should be changed to side pad this HTML. The temp pad is this, target URI is this. So basically what this module does, you can see with info. This module exploits these commands in Pro FTPD version and then can leverage these commands to copy files from any destination to that source or from any source to that destination. And then execution will be possible with PHP remote execution in here. So basically the file is transferred to the web root and listener coming up, listening for that module. A get request to that shell will send us a reverse connection here. So show options. Everything is fine. Let's go for the exploitation. Shell command for opened. So if I interact with shell command for, who am I? Dot 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 data. Again, we are, or we have PHP access on the target. So if I chat on this application, there might be some username and passwords here. Here are the username and passwords for my MySQLi. So, we detected that PHP admin is installed on the target. PHP admin works with MySQL username and passwords. So, a chain of vulnerability is happening here. What was it? Exploit me. Password. Oh, the username is root. The password is exploit me. Login. And we have PHP admin access to the target. So, another way of connecting to the target. We can search for. The shell is also closed because I control C the console search php admin again here it is authenticated remote code execution so if php admin is vulnerable we can use this 
set username to root, set password to exploit me, show options. We have a PHP interpreter, reverse TCP shell, configured. Everything is fine. Let's go for the exploitation. That's it. Interpreter, session 5 opened. And we have again dot 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 data access to it. So session 5, the PIDPS, we are Apache. So there's a lot to work with these meta exploitable machines. Go for yourself, scan them with OpenVAS, scan them with Nexpose, with Nmap and CS scripts. Do manual inspection on the target. Map all the ports. So if you recall on our Nmap, we had, yeah, these modules. So you see the various ports in here. What is port ADAD? What is JT this version? We have IRC on real IRCD, for example. This one can be also searched. So search this. You see, we have an exploit for it. You can use it, exploit it on target, see what happens. And what vulnerabilities can you detect manually? Even manually, you can find some things on the target. What is this port in here? So investigate everything about this target. You see here, put method is accessible on it. So there's another attack vector here, which we can use. What is this port? What services behind this port that Nmap wasn't able to detect? This question mark in here. So you see, there's a lot to play with, with these meta exploitable three machines, and also hack the box laboratories, which I will show you at the end of this lecture here. But that's it for now. We will continue to do some post exploitation with Empire Three. Okay, as you saw, we exploited multiple vulnerabilities on the target. Just a few to demonstrate how uh, vulnerability scan reports and analyze the scan lead to remote code execution and getting access from the target as a POC, which is proof of concept, of course. Because sometimes customers want to know if there was any effects on the environment, if their systems can be compromised and stuff. So that's the reason we do exploitation in ethical hacking steps. The last phase always is reporting, of course, but we don't have it in here. But other than that, the last step in ethical hacking is doing lateral movement, doing privilege escalation, doing persistence, or gathering loot. I mean, uh, let's say exfiltration. Especially in red team operations, these steps are followed and executed on the environment, of course, with the permission of the customer itself. And we call that post-exploitation. So all these steps are gathered to a category called post-exploitation. And here we want to do some simple post-exploitations just so you know what is going on with the topic, with the concept. So first, we have these accesses here. Let them be here. We can do post-exploitation also with Metasploit. But I want a better CNC. I want to show you the Empire CNC. And by CNC, we mean command and control. It's a place for controlling and executing commands and managing and handling our sessions on the environment of the target. So sudo apt update, sudo apt install, PowerShell dash empire. Password. Let this go and install the empire for us. And we will come back after the installation is over. Okay, so the installation will be momentarily done. We will continue on Empire Framework. So we can run PowerShell Empire to see the version. It's version three, which is on Python version three and PowerShell version four, version five. But the version four of Empire is coming out. It's based on .NET, which is much, much better with a lot of uh, security features or, or let's say functionalities and stuff like that. So sudo powershell-empire, run it. And sudo is because we want to listen on some ports and opening sockets need super privileges. So if you are on version 3.8.2, this will be uh, changed to version four in the near future. So one of the things that you should do on a CNC is creating your listeners. So we say listeners, list, nothing is there, use listeners. And if you double tap, you see we have multiple versions of HTTP listener, Metaperator listener, OneDrive listener. 
or we can have dbx listener so for example dbx info it says dropbox list staging folder tasking folder results it needs a dropbox api to work so basically what is happening is you make dropbox your cnc channel and then do the command and control there but use listener in here we just want to do the http listener here so the onedrive one is also the same the target will see onedrive the attacker will see onedrive and everything will be proxied through this uh, famous uh, microsoft file sharing or let's say file store cloud or something like that so that's a really deep discussion to talk about why we use onedrive what impacts does it have and what will be bypassed uh, such as green zone or edr systems and stuff like that but for now just use http listener get info set you see the ip address is fixed uh, the port support ad which by default is ad for http and 443 for https we can have obfuscation on our listeners but for now it's okay execute and we are so list you see listeners http is listening on the attacker machine so on meta exploits we want to pass the sessions to this empire and do some post exploitations so let's create a, a stager for ourselves use a stager tap tap look for windows we want to pass the windows one and let's launch for example the bat so launcher bat set output so it's case sensitive which is not cool but it is win shell dot bat set listener to http show options it has um, word completion with tab to see we can obfuscate so set obfuscate the shell code or the payload through with all these modules in here obfuscation modules msi bypass can be included in this msi is a long story again it's a defensive mechanisms that you should defeat in order to execute powershell code or malicious code anyway let's execute this i want to see what will be the results so get this file you see this is the file that we want to run on our target let's do copy and paste to see if it is executable I want to copy and paste the whole payload in here. So I copied it correctly. And go to the Windows 1. So session slash i2 shell and run this. Chances are this cannot be executed on the shell because, yeah, it's a lot of lines. So we wait on agents we need to transfer the shell in here yes so upload where were we we are in this directory upload where is the file so this file is in here with metaperator we can say i want to upload this bat and if i do ls again you see our bat is in here shell and win shell the bat we don't have so win shell dot bat executed. Let's see if we get any sessions on Empire. Yes, we do. So we got a session on Empire. If I do agents again, you see it says system access. The process is PowerShell on this machine with internal IP this. And the name of the agent is, is this. So if I get agents again, you see last scene changes. So the last time that the session was beaconing on us. So this is beaconing style agent on the target as opposed to the meta exploit meta perter, which is established connection there is no connection closed and stuff so again there's a lot into this we have about i think nine hours in our 40 hours applied ethical hacking and rules of engagement course about lateral movement pervious escalation persistence and post exploitation in general but anyway in here we have the access let's interact with it interact pg help you see we have a lot of commands a lot of items to work with we can do bypass uac if our access is not in a high integrity yes 
we get another shell but we were system already agents there should be another session coming up if everything goes well sometimes it doesn't so let's interact again it seems that we don't have access oh not in a medium integrity process so that's why it was not executed because you already are as I told you system access anyway these modules are in here dear list what does it do it says dear list task and agent to store the contents of the directory in the database there is a lot you can write PowerShell you can write Python and use in this framework you can inject shell code you can get info so you see the info on this agent is available to us help again we can still or can spawn a process so for example a spawn and we can say I think help a spawn something like that yeah a spawns a new Empire agent for a given listener so spawn HTTP help or info everything's fine execute back we are back in agent so if I go to the agents, there should be another session coming up. So Empire is really stable, as I know. And with this amount that I have worked with, I mean, you can trust its functionality when you are in a red team operation or ethical hacking project. So get help. We can do use module. So use module, do tab completion. You see a lot of modules are available to us. So for example, we can do persistent. And install a persistent on the target like this info it says i want to install the persistence on this agent i want a listener yes i want obfuscation yes with these three modules in here i want the msi bypass so when do you want this persistent to happen 9 a.m every day yes let it be like that The name of the persistent to be installed everything is fine let's execute it yes and momentarily yeah the agent will do the task for us you see the scheduler uh, service has installed the updater task so if i get back do shell uh, sketch what was it sketch tasks i think somehow we could list the tasks Oh, it is. It is a sketch task. So, do query for what do we have with query? The name. So, how we can specify the name? You see, it's really normal to forget the commands. You can find them with help. So, I want the task updater to be uh, queried you see it is installed next runtime is this date right here 9 a.m so that's what happens we can run the task and see if it is working so in a red team operation you should always test your persistent access run it we should get a agent momentarily you see we have two agents another agent should come up it is coming up we have it so this one here is our persistent agent we just executed uh, I mean sooner than the time that it was scheduled to test whether or not our persistent is working so interact with it we can do logon passwords or mimikatz it is in here to see if it is working how about hash dump do we have hash dump I think it's mimikatz we all do that but you can do use module Also, you can do search module, search for hash, for example. You see, it's really cool. It doesn't need to look for items by your eyes. You can just search for them. PowerShell, credentials, power dump, invite care roast. So care roasting is another Active Directory attack which we cover in our applied ethical hacking. You can do this is sync, LSA dump, SAM dump. Here it is. Yeah, this is it use module so mimikatz was running you see the passwords are dumped in here we can use these passwords on other targets there's a lot to do
use module credentials mimicat sam info agent is set execute let's see if we can get the hashes you see the description run power exploits invite mimicat function to extract hashes from some database so sam is the database in windows that uh, holds the hashes of that windows uh, system in there so we can say creds to list the credentials for yourself the hashes the credentials everything so the job is started we should have the hashes you can say jobs to see if any pending jobs are ongoing and there is none because the job just executed and we have the hash of every user if I get creds again I don't see the hashes maybe let's see it sh these hashes I don't think are located or saved in a database so you should save them just just like this yeah you should copy and paste in your uh, notepad or something like that for later usage or for your reports so we can do this info to get the system information of this target and we can come back so background if you get agents you see these targets are coming back with a delay of five seconds I personally suggest Cobalt strike on above all red teaming frameworks or CNCs. We have about seven hours working on Cobalt strike on our applied ethical hacking and rules of engagement course. But here I just wanted you to see the Empire framework also. It, it is really capable of doing a lot of things. Okay, let's uh, work with the Linux boxes. You see, Empire is cross platform, it can get access from let's see use the stagers it can get access from mac os x from linux windows and yeah multi let's see for example you can say multi bash use a stager multi launcher not bash launcher info set listener yes set language to python so python info again set out file temp lin.sh or lin.py let's say sh for now well I think it's gonna be a python file of course uh, base64 yes obfuscate true let's execute that the file is created let's cat it cat clean this permission denied sudo cat here it is here it is the command that we can use to get access from any Linux machine with Python access. So here we are. Let's control C, background the job, sessions. Let's get session five, shell, paste, run. And we have it. We have a Python agent here. You see, the test flow is level three, Ubuntu. The access is dot 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 data. The process is Python three. The delay is five seconds again and yeah we can interact with it like this get help the commands are a little different but you can shell who am i you can shell netestat for example any command you see the netestat is printed here you can use module tab and you see we can do a lot of things with these modules these are all post exploitation everyone so these packages can be worked. You can work on every one of these. You can do key logging. You can do hash dump, run a sniffer on the target, uh, copy the clipboard, this one. And in the OS X also, you can get access from OS X machines. So Empire doesn't care about the OS. It will get access from whatever OS. You can run the module. You can run the stager. This red one is dead. So whatever is red is not coming back. But again, personally, I recommend Cobalt Strike, which is the most powerful and customizable red teaming framework available today. That's my idea. Let's continue to wrap things up for this mini course in here. Okay, let's continue to hackers.exposed website. This is our website, everyone. You can check it out. Our courses are presented in here. Our blogs and posts are presented in here so we have two courses one for linux for people who are not even 
a bit familiar with Linux, they can come here and learn Linux from scratch. We will teach you 200 modern Linux tools. You see, project-based shell scripting. We will tell you about Tmux, OMIZ, etc. About Linux firewall, Linux kernel, handling basic to complex. Uh, Linux projects and stuff like that. You have 30 day money back guarantee. So with Udemy, everything is safe. You can buy the course and uh, see it yourself. See if you understand the concepts, if you are cool with the instructors or teachers. And I'm sure you will be. <laughs> so if you weren't, you can just uh, do a refund, of course. But uh, this is our Linux course. You can work on it. You can learn. It's nine hours. It will get you boosted for the second course, our volume two, which is applied. It's called Hacking and Rules of Engagement. This very mini course that we had in here up to here was a quick review over the concepts in this course. But it is 40 hours. I will show you what concepts are in this. We have more than five hours live hack the box hacking sessions it is four courses in one so hacking python hacking scripting and threat hunting and kali linux so it's really multiple courses in one course but we will get deep in each of them we have more than five hours of red teaming in it so red teaming is advanced penetration testing or it's called hacking you will work on a lot of web attacks based on os top 10 you will work on mitra attack framework for your red teaming operations you will build a complete SIEM, which is in a defensive part. So you will work red teaming and blue teaming, I mean offensive and defensive, both together. And again, another 30 days money back guarantee, which I beg you not to do refunds. <laughs> but you can do that. But anyway, <laughs> that's it. That's our Linux course. I wanted to show you here, you see the concepts the sections introduction then we go for some terminal tweaks we have the packages the command line we talk about the hardware the disk file systems in linux so this is our linux course of course we talk about the processes their management managing users networking in linux so you see every one of these sections have multiple lectures we talk about security and firewall or ip tables inside linux Deep system visibility with Cystic. Uh, we talk about scripting, shell scripting. This section is also cool. And then we talk about Vessel, which is Windows subsystem for Linux. So this is our Linux course, but the other one, which I really recommend to people who want to start ethical hacking and go from the beginning or from scratch to advanced ethical hacking concepts. This course is for them. So you can see the reviews, you can see the preview, so you see, we have multiple videos in here for you to make sure that this course is proper for you. So you see, this is the beginning introduction uh, explained by the instructor. We have the virtual environment video. We talk about NSCS scripts. These are previews. So we work on DVWA. We create mini projects. For example, in this preview, 21 minutes. You can see how we create a simple port scanner with Python, of course. And then we have uh, another hack the box machine solved in here in 16 minutes. This is a part of that video. So the previews are great. You should go and check this out. And if you want to see the content, you can see this yourself, of course. You see Udemy, Applied Ethical Hacking, and Rules of Engagement. If you search in Google for this name, you will see the course page. So we have a crash course on Linux. And then we go for getting your hands dirty, which is about uh, preparing the environment. We install the IDEs, the vulnerable machines and stuff. So we start with understanding attack vectors, information gathering, vulnerability scanning, post-exploitation. So look at the hours. It's really deep. We work on everything. So you see about four hours working on post-exploitation, exploitation and password attacks. So we work on network attacks, then we go for social engineering, then we have five hours of web application hacking in here. So you see a lot of lectures. We can preview one of them. Then we go for Python scripting. So a crash course about Python with two simple or mini uh, projects in it. Then we go five hours, near six hours for CTFs with Hack the Box. So we show you how to solve the CTFs step by step. And I will show you how to move Further, I mean, you're not going to need anyone uh, after that. You can solve CTFs yourself 
with some try and errors or hard working and stuff. So we go for security standards and then we move forward about five hours to Cobalt Strike, which is something like Empire, but much more powerful than Empire. I personally use this in my red teaming projects. So you see a lot of lectures about different aspects, operations and stuff on this framework, about five hours. Then we go for Active Directory attacks in two hours and 30 minutes. We have Mitra framework, we have the defensive part. So these sections are all about creating defensive SIEM with Elastic Stack Vazoo Manager and stuff. So the last section here, it's about one hour, covers a lot of use cases about detecting various types of techniques and tactics used by attackers or threat hunters. So it's a great course for people who want to uh, follow ethical hacking or red teaming and stuff and get a job on that. So, okay, in this mini course, we didn't have enough time to work on the application attacks, but I just wanted you to see this port swigger. So port swigger has a great framework called Burp Suite, which can be used for doing assessment on the applications. It also has a great laboratory, online laboratory that you can work on various attacks. So this is also explained in our ethical hacking course on Udemy. But anyway, a lot of these items are, or some of them are solved in that course. But I just wanted you to see this. You can go for installing Burp Suite and come to this laboratory, follow some books or courses like our course to uh, become an ethical hacker who knows how to attack websites and defend against attackers, of course, or how to solve the problems. And Hack the Box is the other part that I wanted you to see. This uh, online, you see a massive hacking playground. This is an online laboratory for working on a lot of attacks on a lot of modules. And the system is like this. You click on a machine or a challenge, an end game, a network of vulnerable machines. Everything is represented in here. And then you connect with an open VPN connection to their laboratory. It is really easy. One open VPN connection to this laboratory, and then you can go for exploiting various machines with various vulnerabilities, with various techniques, of course. So this is also covered about five hours in our course, in our applied ethical hacking and rules of engagement course. That's it, I just wanted you to see and note these addresses, of course. Okay, that's it everyone in this course, or let's say mini course, we try to have a fast overview over ethical hacking with its steps and what we should learn, how we should work, how it is going on for people who are beginners. I hope you success and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.